my name is Muhammad Al Kaiman bin Abdul Aziz. My fix number is zero six seven three two six. So in this video presentation, I will cover about the introduction of the case study for the donuts. So we move to the history of this company. From when it was established, who was the first person to establish it, what this company has to offer the public, and more. Dunkin Donuts is an American multinational with service restaurant chain known for its main menu of coffee and donuts. Its biggest shop operation in Quincy, Massachusetts, in 1948 under the name Kettle Donuts and managed by Bill Rosenberg. And then under the name of Kettle Donut was changed to Dunkin' Donut in 1955. Dunkin' Donut started to expand quickly in the 1970s and 1980s when they started opening franchise all throughout in the United States. Early in the 1990s, Dunkin' Donut began to expand internationally by opening locations in Canada. Throughout the 1990s and 2000, company began to expand globally, establishing a presence in several countries, including South Korea, Malaysia, Japan, United Kingdom, and more. The name of Dunkin' Donuts was shortened to the Dunkin' in the early 2000s to reflect the company's expanded menu that went beyond donuts. Breakfast sandwich, bagels, muffin, cakes, and other bakery items are among the offerings the company has included to expand its menu. In order to position itself as a destination for high quality coffee, Dunkin' Donuts likewise made considerable expenditures in its coffee selection. I think that's all uh, for the history of the Dunkin' Donuts and I move to the visions of the Dunkin' Donuts. The visions of the Dunkin' Donuts is to be a global leader in the quick service restaurant industry, specifically in the coffee and baked goods segment. In addition, the missions of the Dunkin' Donuts is to serve responsibly to be known as a company that responsibly serves our guests, franchises, staff, communities, business partners, and the environment. I think that's all from me. I will pass this video presentation to the next presenter. I will move to the background. Dunkin' Brands Group is a global quick service restaurant, QSR. Its headquarters located in Brenton, United States. William Rosenberg started it in 1950. At first, it was called as Open Kettle. In 1950, they just changed their name to Dunkin' Donuts to show that their main product is coffee and cookies. In recent years, the company just changed their names to just Dunkin' to, rec to, recognize, that the, to recognize that the fact that they sell more than just uh, donuts. Dunkin' Brand is a company that competes in QSR industry and specializes in the coffee and donut sectors of the market. The industry is marked by high levels of competition and the presence of number of significant firms such as Starbucks and McDonald's. Dunkin' Brands have their own advantages such as great brand awareness, beverage focus, menu diversity, and strong purchasing system. These advantages make them have power to stay in the industry. There are factors for Dunkin' Brands to make their strategic decisions. It is divided in internal and external factors. For internal factors, the brand has it had, they have brand heritage and purchasing, purchasing. For external factors, they have shift in consumer preferences and competitive environment. With hesitations, I would like to continue our presentation regarding the problem statement of Dunkin's Brand Group Incorporation, which is comprised the main problem or challenges faced by the organizations and the specific issues. Referring to the slide, the first main problem or challenges that we highlighted is regarding the accounting perspective. Dunkin Donuts incurred big debt. Dunkin' Donuts has a total debt of 3.004 billion under the guaranteed loan service as of 2019, including 3 billion in long-term debt and 0.422 billion in current debt. The second significant challenge is in terms of human resource perspective, with weak franchising relationships and legal litigations against franchises, while the merchant model is growing and declining, it has its drawbacks. There are management and control issues. In the past, Dunkin's franchises have filed numerous lawsuits against them. Ironically, we can witness that numerous branches in USA have been worn out due to the inefficiency management of human resources in managing their fr franchises. The last one is regarding on marketing strategy perspective. This can be seen throughout market segmentation in India. Dunkin Donuts had initially failed to understand the consumer preferences in India for a fast food restaurant that offered full meals rather than light donuts for a breakfast. After getting poor response from the Indian customers, they decided to reprint itself and offered much more menu than donuts and coffee. They introduced menu that includes coffee, sandwiches, donuts, along with Indian street menu items that include vegetarian burgers and spicy sandwiches. However, it remains a challenge for the company to expand its operations. Switching to the next slide, it is regarding the specific issues faced by Dunkin' Brain Group Incorporation. The first one is store cannibalization. Store cannibalization occurs when many stores of the same brand are positioned too close to each other, negatively impacting sales and profitability. Dunkin' Donuts, like any other chain, may experience store cannibalization which can cause a number of issues including sales dilution. Second specific issue is limited number of supply of donuts and bakery goods 
from centralized manufacturing locations. Due to centralized manufacturing locations, Dunkin' Donuts has the difficulty of limited supply of donuts and bakery goods. Dunkin' Donuts uses a centralized supply chain approach, producing donuts and bakery items in a few centralized manufacturing facilities and distributing them to individual outlets. The third point is greater number of competitors. In the coffee and beverage sector, Dunkin' Donuts compete with major businesses such as Starbucks, McDonald's, McCafe, and Tim Hortons. These competitors provide a diverse choice of coffee drinks, specialty beverages, and creative flavors, making it difficult for Dunkin' Donuts to attract and maintain customers in this highly competitive market. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Abdul Ali Bin Razali, 07004. Now, we move to the, to the analysis part. For this part, we will explain about the external factor, which is best factor that is in this, this company, but I will focus on technological and environmental factor because I think this factor is quite important for this company. So, let's begin. As you can see, for the technological factor, the food service sector has changed as a result of technological development, including smart ordering, electronic uh, payment, and data analytics. Uh, to improve the customer experience, increase open Professional effectiveness and we went ahead of the competition. Dunkin' Donuts can use technology. For example, Dunkin' Donuts can improve customer service, cut expenses, and speed up operation by implementing automation and AI technology. Uh, the business must keep an eye on emerging technology and incorporate them into its its operation. We show that uh, technological play vital role for remain competitive in the industry. The company must utilize the benefit of the technology for improve and keep moving forward for the for the future. Furthermore, environmental is one of the important key for this company. Why? Not today, stakeholders did not evaluate the performance of the company by looking the financial data. But the stakeholder also care about the non-financial data which refer to the environmental and sustainability of the company. Related to this company, they practice a re recycling system in their daily operation. For instance, Basket Robin and Dunkin' Donuts which located at the United States. They use the nickname Waffle Cone uh, Paper Wrapper and Basket Robin Paper Bag that are made from recycled material and compost. It shows that this company is concerned about the environmental issue for satisfied customer expectation and legal requirement. I think that's all from me. Next, I will pass to the next presenter to explain more. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Azib Shafiuddin bin Muhammad Sulaiman and my matrix number is 067307. Now, I will continue to my part, which is so analysis. First, we will go with S. Dunkin' Donuts company success is driven by its strong brand recognition, convenience to locations, franchise model, strong coffee heritage, and effective marketing and promotions. The brand is associated with quality, convenience, and a wide range of delicious products, making it easily accessible to customers in urban areas, suburban neighborhoods, and along major highways. Dunkin' Donuts company franchise model has enabled the company to rapidly expand its presence, while its expertise in coffee preparation and effective marketing strategies have helped maintain brand visibility and drive customer engagement. Second, we will go with W, weaknesses of Dunkin' Donuts Company. Dunkin' Donuts Company faces several challenges including intense competition in the crowded market, health and dietary concerns, regional concentration, franchisee management and dependence on coffee sales. Competition from other coffee chains, independent cafes and quick service restaurants can make it difficult for Dunkin' Donuts Company to differentiate itself and maintain its customer base. Additionally, the brand's association with sugary baked goods and calorie dense products may limit its appeal to health conscious consumers. The regional concentration of Dunkin' Donuts Company presence may also restrict growth opportunities. Managing franchise locations and ensuring consistent quality and adherence to brand standards can be a complex task. Finally, the brand's dependence on coffee sales makes it vulnerable to fluctuations in coffee prices, supply chain disruptions, or changes in consumer coffee consumption habits. Now, we will go with O, Opportunities of Dunkin' Donuts Company. Dunkin' Donuts can explore several strategies to address its challenges and drive growth. Expanding the menu to include healthy options, plant-based alternatives, and specific dietary needs can attract a broader customer Base. Additionally, expanding into new international markets can increase brand recognition globally and capture new customer segments. By integrating technology, offering seamless digital, digital experiences and gathering variable customer data, the King Donuts company can enhance customer convenience and engagement. Establishing strategy partnerships with convenience store chains can expand the brand's reach and visibility. Finally, implementing sustainability initiatives such as using eco-friendly packaging, promoting recycling programs, and sourcing sustainable ingredients can enhance the brand's reputation and appeal to environmental mentally conscious consumers. Lastly, we will go with T. T is threats. Threats of Dunkin' Donuts Company. Dunkin' Donuts Company may face threats due to shifting consumer preferences towards healthier options, rising input costs that may negatively impact its financial performance, adverse economic conditions that can decrease sales and lower customer footfall, regulatory and legal challenges that may require adjustments to operations and supply chain management, and intense competition from both national and local chains, as well as independent coffee shops and cafes. To remain competitive, Dunkin' Donuts Company must adapt its menu to cater to evolving consumer demands and sustain and grow 
market share in the face of intense competition. That's all from me, and now I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. My name is Mamu Aikal Fikri, version 067332. <coughs> Here I will discuss about a few alternative strategies for the case study of Dunkin' Brand Group Incorporation. The first one is related diversification. The other feasibility of uh, related diversification that is good market analysis is strong financial resources. This strategy can be feasible if the size, growth potential, competition, and customer demand in your market was good and can be the strategy that will, will be executed. Two, and the second one is strong financial resources. The related diversification also feasible if the company has sufficient financial resources to run the strategy that is by adding the new but related products. There are two potential benefits are for the related diversification that is risk mitigation and revenue and profit growth. By diversifying into a related business, it spreads the risk across multiple segments and provides a buffer against the impact of changing consumer trend. Second is revenue and profit growth. By entering new market or product categories, the Dunkin' Brand Group Incorporation can tap into additional sources of revenue, revenue and help reduce reliance on a single product or market. However, there are two potential risks that is brand duration and operational complexity. If the new venture do not align well with the existing brand equity and customer expectation, it could lead to confusion or dissatisfaction among consumers. Second is operational complexity. Dunkin', uh, Dunkin would need to ensure that, that they have the necessary resources, capabilities and operational efficiencies to handle the complexity associated with the market business lines. Second alternative is uh, backward integration. The other feasibility of backward integration, the first one is good supply chain control. The success of the strategy depends on how the company assess the potential benefit of backward integration in terms of supply chain control, quality assurance and conceiving. Second is strong financial resources. The success of the strategy depends on management or allocation of financial resources by prioritize the possibility of the market that will bring great success to the company. There are two potential benefits that supply chain control. By integrating with supply or taking ownership of certain supply chain activities, the company can reduce layer relies on external parties and mitigate risk, mitigate risk to supply disruption. Second, it costs saving and improve margins. Directly, such raw material or ingredients such as coffee beans or bakery ingredients can eliminate intermediaries and associated markups. There are two potential risks related to the backward integration that is a relationship with the suppliers. If Dunkin integrates backward into the supply chain, it could impact relationship with suppliers who may become competitors or lost business. Second is lack, lack or expertise. Entering new areas of the supply chain through backward integration may require a expertise and knowledge that Dunkin that currently lacks. Last strategy is product development. There are two feasibility of product development that is good market demand. The success of the mark, uh, good market demand depends on the company's ability to effectively promote the great marketing and improvement of their products. Second is research and development capabilities. The success of the strategy depends on the activities Dunkin undertake to innovate and introduce new products and services or to improve their existing offerings. There are two potential benefits that is the first one is increased revenue. By expanding revenue new or offering new variations, Dunkin can tap into additional market segments and generate incremental revenue. Second, uh, second benefit is enhanced customer satisfaction. By implementing the strategy, it can satisfy the customer's preferences by produce or introduce the product that fulfilled their preference based on their geography and culture behavior. The last one is potential risk. There are two potential risks. The first one is high development cost. Product development initiatives require investment in research and development, testing as well as marketing. And the last one is time and resources constraint. If the company is not able to effectively allocate resources or manage timelines, it can impact overall business performance. I think that's all for me. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you, Mr. Fikri. Assalamualaikum. My name is Wan Ahmad bin Wan Ahmad Rizki. My metric number is 067341. And I will be continuing with recommendations. Based on the four alternatives that have been picked for Dunkin' Donuts, the most suitable strategy alternative based on the analysis on data is product development. It involves creating new products or modifying existing ones to meet the evolving needs and preferences of customers. By focusing on product development, Dunkin' Donuts can introduce new flavors, variations, or healthy options to attract a broader customer base and maintain their competitive edge in the market. First is it is evolving customer preferences. Food and beverage industry are constantly changing and customers are seeking more options. Creating a product development strategy, the Donuts can introduce new menu items for these changing preferences. Donuts can remain relevant and get a wider customer base. The second reason is expanding revenue streams. So, it provides opportunities for the Donuts to maximize their revenue potential through the introduction of the new menu items and expanding their product range. They can generate additional sales from existing customers. They can also attract new customers and tap into new market segments. These expansions of revenue streams contribute to the company's growth and financial success. The third reason is brand innovation and relevance. It showcases itself as an innovative and customer-focused brand. Their complement to meeting customer needs and staying ahead of market trends in which enhances customer perception of the brand. The last reason is enhanced customer loyalty. It strengthens customer loyalty by providing customers with new and satisfying experience. Customers are more likely to return and explore the new offerings leading to increase customer loyalty and repeat business. It can build strong relationships with their customer base. That's all from me. Thank you.
conclusion, the assignment highlights uh, the key findings, potential impact, and alternative strategies to overcome the problem faced by the company in the food and beverage industry. The key findings uh, can be summarized by saying that Tangkin Danat has uh, taken a variety of initiatives to ensure that their company ranks among the top companies in the food and beverage sector, able to compete uh, with major players like McDonald's, Starbucks, and Pizza Hut, and can also survive for a long time in the sector. Leading to the analysis then, we can conclude that among the four options chosen for Dunkin, product development is the recommended strategy. Product development refers to the company creating new or modifying existing product to meet customer needs. Conclusion, the lesson that we can learn from the case study is that we should manage our resources efficiently. Strategy is an essential for an organization to adapt for the changing food and beverage industry. Last but not least, we should monitor the strategy we implement so that if there is a change in the economic flow, we can take an appropriate action. I think that's our presentation from our group. I hope that what we present uh, can give some benefits to all of you. Thank you.